Gold's got it on the tee. He kicks it off, and here we go from Levi's Stadium. On the return, it's Tristan Ebner from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. going to throw right away. This pass on target. Vegas Jones with it. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. He'll find Jones again. Complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. So we just called his name on the previous snap, and they go right back to him, Charles, for a second consecutive completion. Yeah, I think what we're discovering on this drive is that he feels like he has answers no matter what defense you throw up there. He reads it, finds the open spot, and is available for the completion. From the 47, it's second and five. Fields now to throw. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. And this will move the chains again as the tackle is going to be made at the 49ers' 29-yard line. On first and 10, here's Fields. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A shotgun snap, Fields. Completion here to Claypool. And he's brought down after a very nice game. A big play there on the catch and run. And it'll move the chains. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. On first and goal, they'll try the option left. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Now Fields. Open man, he finds Komet. Touchdown, Chicago. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. Uh, the underdog here is showing no fear. Great opening drive. Now, we were in the locker room for the pregame speech. But I would... And he's going to go down. Can't get rid of it. So a sack on a two-point drive. Well, they had that great, long, methodical drive to put in the end zone. Then they tried to bite off a little more and get eight points. Instead, they're sitting at six. But didn't that feel like a decision that they made on Tuesday. Yeah. You well, know, you usually say game. that's what they do, right? Right. That, that's the best one. The best ones do that. They take the emotion out of it. That felt like that was scripted. Hey, if we score on the opening drive, we're going to go for two and try and really gain an advantage. First down, it's Purdy. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Throwing here, Purdy. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Heavy set out there on third and one. Back to throw, Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. That's caught downfield by Kittle. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 
Give him 32 on the play. I'm pretty sure any quarterback will tell you it's nice to have a tight end that can stretch the field. And how about him right there, working in the heart of the defense, and they connect on a very nice play downfield. A combi and he'll take this into the end zone for a San Francisco touchdown. Christian McCaffrey taking it in from two yards out. And the Niners have tied the ball game with a chance to take the lead. Robbie Gold on for the extra point. It's up and good, so they go the conservative route instead, and it gets them a 7-6 lead here in the opening quarter. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. Ebner going to elect to bring this out of the end zone here. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. On first down, Fields. And a dangerous throw there on the drop-off. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Now it's Fields. Open man completes it to Claypool. Touchdown, Chicago! Chase Claypool, 69 yards. And the Bears have regained the lead. They erased that deficit pretty quickly, did they not? A two-play drive. What do we call that? Short-lived? Very. <laughs> Very short-lived. Two plays later, they're in the end zone and back out in front. We always talk about drives, don't we? Does two plays count as a drive? Not really, but that second play was so good. I don't care what we call it. It was enjoyable to watch. Boy, I guess they're going to keep trying to put the pedal to the metal here. They're going to try an onside kick. And they've got it. They recovered it. Wait, hang on now, though. There's a penalty flag down. Yeah, you got to wait until that ball goes 10 yards. They did not. They hit it before, and that draws the flag every time. And there's no doubt in my mind that converting an onside kick has never been tougher in the NFL with the new rules. So trying to get it to 10 yards, timing up perfectly, that's tough enough to begin with. But when you go ahead and grab it before it goes, you got no shot done. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. 42 yards rushing for him now on just his first three carries. Right back to him on first down. And across the chalk, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. Christian McCaffrey with his second touchdown here in this first half as they have taken the lead. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And the lead is now two. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. Abner going to add a mistake on the lateral. It's a loose ball. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. 
Fields. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. And some room to maneuver. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. 14 yards into Chicago first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them, and I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Fields on third down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. He's got it at the 15. Touchdown, Chicago. Jarnell Mooney, 59 yards. And the Bears have yet again retaken the lead. Matt Eberflew is going to keep his offense on the field. They're going for two. Fields trying to throw for it. And this will be caught as they convert here for two. So they're able to throw it in for the two-point conversion. Sometimes that can be a risky play, but they got it. Yeah, you always have to be careful here because if you do get it intercepted, it's returned by the defense. That's two points for them, but they identified an open target and put it right on him. Uh, second quarter onside kick there that failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approach in going after it also may signal that they feel like they have the superior team, that they can try these sorts of things and it won't come back and hurt them later. Here's McCaffrey. Trucks over it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. game working they'll stick with it on first down and that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line stuck for a loss by the safety Eddie Jackson that's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense On second down, McCaffrey down to the 25. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Purdy with it on third and long. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. Purdy on fourth down. And looking for Kittle, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Jaquan Brisker. And the Bears are going to get the ball back on the turnover as they hold on fourth down. Fields on first down. Left side, got Jones. And he's going to get this from the 6 out to the 12. A pickup of 6 as they double their workspace. Caught by Montgomery. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. They'll come to the line needing only 2 yards to gain the first here. Third and 2, Fields. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he will have the Bears first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Here's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Komet. 
And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. To the air again, Fields. That's going to be caught downfield by Mooney. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now a first down throw, Fields. A throw left side taken in by Komet. They call it no gain there on the first down play. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Throwing again on second down. Fields, he's going to air one out. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. He's put up numbers in this one by pushing the envelope a bit whenever he could with deeper throws. But let's play a little philosophy here. Some plays it works, sometimes they're ready for you. And that time, they were on guard. Incomplete. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Throwing on third down, Fields. This is caught. Touchdown, Bears! Chase Claypool in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bears would extend their lead here just before halftime. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. A final shot before the break. Fields toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Tough there. Good pass. Hit the hands. He just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere. Seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. The risk reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play. And here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them. And field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now they've given up that type of... And this is going to be intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The 49ers going to have the football and trailing on the scoreboard as we get back underway on EA Sports. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And they trail here to begin the second half. What's going to be a key for them to get back in the game? I think they're right there, and I think this game is still up for the taking for them because we always talk about turnovers. They had two of them in the first half, and once you start talking about if you have three, four, or five, you know it's beyond difficult to try and win a football game with that. Those have to be eliminated. If they take care of the ball, they've still got a shot. Play action, now Purdy. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And able to haul it in is Kittle. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. On first down, it's Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. Finding room at midfield. And they'll get this down to around the 37-yard line. 
So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 47. Ready to throw it on first down. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now here's a throw right side, taken in by his tight end. Touchdown, 49ers! George Kittle, 47 yards. And the 49ers are back within a score. The coaches must really like to see that from the quarterback because he's had the interceptions in this game, but they're able to connect on the touchdown pass. And teammates love to see that because they know that they miss blocks during a game, but they come back and make them later on. They miss tackles, right? They miss making plays, but the spotlight is magnified on your quarterback. And when he stands up to the pressure and comes back and throws a touchdown pass after throwing some picks earlier, they feel great about that guy. And likewise for him personally, as a rookie quarterback, has to give him more confidence. And he's got it. They convert for two, and that gets him even closer. Now a two-point game. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target, the tight end. I love how you described it, because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius, as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. On second and ten, Fields. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, old momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop during a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. Boy, a real head scratcher there. And the Niners take over in terrific field position. Trying to get the running game going with McCaffrey. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13. Down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. But they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it. And no adjustment has been made to take it away. McCaffrey. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Now a run with McCaffrey. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Here's Mitchell with a catch out of the backfield. 
third quarter this time to move out in front now gold for the extra point and that one gives him a three-point lead Touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. Ebner going to elect to bring this out of the end zone here. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Charles, we'll see how this offense responds. Remember the last time they were out, they went for it on fourth down, did not get it, and that led to a touchdown on the other side. So they need a response here. They certainly do, and I just have a question for you. You think that was a gut feel, or was that analytics that came into play there deciding to go for it on fourth down? That felt like gut to me. What about you? Yeah, absolutely, because the way it backfired, where they are in the game, all those things, that didn't feel like an analytics call. That certainly felt like, hey, and that's caught inside the 30. And they're going to move it down to inside the 25. On first down, it's Fields. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. To throw his Fields. And that's going to be too high, out of bounds and incomplete. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game, but after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, Fields. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. How about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. On fourth down, Fields locates Claypool on the crossing route. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Now Fields. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. Here's Fields. Quick slant, fighting Claypool. Touchdown, Bears! Chase Claypool, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Bears answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth-quarter lead. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So what can the Bears do here as they'll go for two? Fields trying to throw for it. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. Uh -huh. 
This is McCaffrey, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. They find some open field here. Oh, look at the juke. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Well, plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. They'll try and throw for it, and he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth quarter lead. So that effort gives them a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about, not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. Abner going to elect to bring this out of the end zone here. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked out officially at the 21. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in the tight one. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Partner, what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And not much happening there. He's taken down, but a late penalty flag in the backfield. Now, this looks like a roughing call. Well, certainly those are the types of mistakes they're trying to avoid as they attempt to protect this lead late in the game. And let's face it, they're hoping that this one doesn't cost them in a significant way. Yeah, one guy committed a penalty, but now the entire defense has to pay the price and try and rise up and overcome it. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Fields able to hit his target, Claypool. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Throwing again is Fields. Claypool with another catch. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Big third down. A field goal from this spot, 57 yards, as they hope to move it a little closer. Here's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Komet. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. Fourth down, Fields has to have this one. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You stop to get it done, as you noted, and they did. On first and ten, here's Fields. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Less than two to play with just a field goal separating these two sides. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Ready, ready. Ready. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And out of bounds, all the way down at the three. 
They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. You know, as a defensive guy, I don't normally do this, Brandon, but a tip of the cap to the offensive coordinator. Design quarterback run at this stage of the fourth quarter when I expected him to throw the ball, and he got a first down. Yeah, trailing this stage of the fourth quarter. Picked up the first, stopped the clock, too. Yeah, sometimes there's some guts in play calling when you go against the grain because you know you could easily be criticized if it doesn't work out. down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here's Fields. And he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. I see you nodding your head up and down. It's a very heady decision at this stage of the game. Out of the pocket, nowhere to go. Just get rid of it. That's a smart play because you're not worried about your completion percentage, and you're also not trying to force it into bad traffic as well. Throw the ball away, live to fight another down. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So they'll accept that penalty, and that'll, of course, move the football up the field. The penalty gets them half the distance closer, but they'll still need to come up with something on third and goal. Back to throw. Fields on the move to his left. Open man, he finds Komet. Touchdown, Chicago. A great effort there. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bears have taken a fourth quarter lead. And Charles, they continue to have trouble stopping him as he's into the end zone yet again. He has multiple series now that have ended with him in the end zone. A perfect plan on how to utilize him best when they get in close. Now Fields. And he'll get into the end zone to make it a five-point game. So they go with a pass, and it works there on the two-point try. Charles, just in general, what are your thoughts passing versus running on two-point conversion? Situational? It is situational. You have to know your team. What is your strength? Because so many people think you have to throw the ball in a two-point conversion, but the stats will tell you that running it is about as proficient. So know your team and go to your strength. So now the possession will begin at the 35 after the errant kickoff. Well, that's certainly one way to avoid a dangerous kick returner, I suppose, but you are giving up extra yardage, that's for sure, because if you put it out of the end zone, they start at the 25. So at a minimum, you're giving up 10 yards to the offense. They'll run with McCaffrey, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Again, they run again. It's McCaffrey. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Oh, and a bad time late for a poor throw. It's intercepted. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. Well, do you want to unpack that one, or do you want me to? <laughs> You're the boss. We get the interception, then really, he's just too loose with a football on the return, and he costs it right back up the other way. I've seen this happen in an NFL game, and boy, did it cost someone. San Francisco at Atlanta a few seasons ago. Atlanta throws the interception. San Francisco runs it back. Game is salted away. Fumbles on the return. Atlanta gets it back. Drives down, kicks the game-winning field goal. <laughs> How about that? And a crazy situation we just saw there. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Purdy to throw. And that's complete to Croft. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before it's taken down. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and ten. Here's Purdy. This one caught by Kittle. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. 
as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. He's back to throw. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And that's intercepted yet again, and that could be the backbreaker. Eddie Jackson picks it. Oh, no, he lost the football. And in for the score. Are you kidding me? They return it, and they take the lead. And that's got to be so disappointing for a defense. You, know, you force the fumble, think you got a chance at a turnover, and instead, not only do you give up the football, you also give up a touchdown as well. Yeah, you just think to yourself, you've done all the hard work, right? You force the fumble. But when they didn't come up with it, I think they relaxed a little bit or maybe lost their focus as well and it ended up turning out to be a touchdown against them. Well, Charles, a heartbreaking way to lose this game. They got into position for that final play, had a decent look toward the end zone, but ultimately picked off, and that's your ball game. Yeah, they gave themselves a great opportunity, didn't they? They'll replay that snap over and over, but sometimes you just have to give credit to the other side. Defense stood up in the final moment and came through with the interception.